Hello and welcome back to Automotive Tales. On today's episode, we are tackling the T5R. Goal is here, it's back, we moved it from storage and it's time to try and get it back on the road. Now the car was in perfect fettle when it was parked up, uh, it had a fresh MOT, it just had a service, so it should in theory be good to go. But before we try and start it, the first thing we're going to do is the obligatory moto tag mount from Ed and Edge Engineering. Uh, so I'm going to register myself an air tag and we are going to pop that on the car so I always know where the car is. So here we are in the T5R. Um, I have to say I do miss sitting in this car. This is possibly the most comfortable seat. So you'll have seen in the big move video, I mentioned the steering wheel. So you can see what I mean about this. It's a lovely wooden steering wheel, which was a Volvo option. This isn't something that's been done aftermarket. The car didn't have it originally. It had the normal leather version with this same airbag in it. Um, but I found one of these for sale for a reasonable price and I thought it made a nice addition. Annoyingly, it is slightly different to the trim that's on the dashboard, this kind of like painted veneer plastic here. Um, but it's still a really nice thing to uh, to use when you're driving. So, as I said before, the first thing we're going to do is fit ourselves a little moto tag mount with an air tag. So I am going to get on now and register that, which means I need to get off the phone, and uh, put it in the little mount and I'm going to hide it somewhere in the car. So that's the tag done. Next, we're on to trying to start the engine. Now, we're not just going to throw a battery on it and hope for the best because that's slightly dangerous. Uh, I'm going to turn the engine over, hopefully by hand, check it's not seized because uh, it has been sat for a long period of time. Uh, and I'm going to check the oil. I might well drain some oil, put some fresh oil in the top just to make sure that the uh, top of the engine isn't completely dry uh, before we start to uh, start turning it over, before it builds oil pressure. Uh, and then just give it a general check over, put a battery on, do the obligatory smoke test, i.e. make sure nothing is going to start smoking when you put a battery on. And then if I'm confident enough at that point, I might well turn the key and see what happens. So let's find a battery, which could be interesting in itself, and, uh, and head on down to the car. Right, so I have finished the motor tag mount, but before I tear into the car, uh, I thought I'd show you some of the cool stuff that I'd forgotten I'd left in the car. So the first thing, it has this original Volvo lamp spares and spare fuses box thing in the glove box, which is really cool. Um, it has its original number from the very first Volvo 600 at Bruntingthorpe. Um, I actually did a video about Volvo 600, which you will find up here in the corner. I'll put a, a link in. Uh, we also went to the Yellow Car Convoy, which is a whole nother story at some point that I'd love to tell on the channel. Um, and I will also put a link up to, there's a load of good videos out and about from the Yellow Car Convoy, but that was a great day. Um, and my uh, Swedish flag beanie hat that my friend Janet knitted for me years ago because she knows I'm a Volvo fiend. Um, so some cool, fun little finds. Um, but time to stop faffing around with this lot and let's get the power barn open and see what is going on with the battery. So let's be honest, this is the shot you are all waiting for. The money shot. So good old 20 valve turbo Volvo engine. Um, and it really rather clean condition. Certainly not cleaner than under the engine bay of the T5. Um, so we can see a small problem here. Uh, stupid man behind the camera here forgot to disconnect the battery last time we parked it up, which is why there's literally no power whatsoever. Um, so unfortunately, that battery is probably toast. However, cool thing you may not have known about Volvos, there is no tool required to remove the battery. That is the battery clamp that goes on and pushes down with your thumb, and then it's got a little recess underneath to put your fingers in. You pull up on there and it releases the battery. You don't need a special tool. Although you do need a 10 mil spanner for the terminals, which is kind of handy that I have the keys to the old T5 here, because, <laughs> One of the things that is on the keyring of the T5 is a 10 mil spanner because for some reason it always used to run its battery flat. It stopped after a few years, but for ages it always did. So I always had a 10 mil spanner on so that I could disconnect the battery. Uh, the terminal wasn't particularly tight, but it was still on um, and we can start to remove it. Now, obviously, I can't do this with the camera in my hand, so I am going to put the camera down 
Take this out, I've only got a small battery. I haven't got a proper 72 ampere battery like it should have, but it'd be enough just to turn the ignition on, check everything's okay, do the usual smoke test, make sure there's no magic smoke escaping when we first put the battery on and put the ignition on. And then we're gonna go through and check the oil and a few other bits and pieces. It already looks like the coolant level isn't too bad and it had a proper service before it went away. So that's proper Volvo coolant, so it should have been fine. Uh, and then I'm going to see if I can turn the engine over. I don't know how easy it's going to be in the garage here. Um, but ideally I can get onto the belt down here and maybe just turn it slightly. See if we can just confirm that there's no issues uh, before we actually try and turn it over. So less talking, more fixing the battery problem. Okay, time for the all-important smoke test. This doesn't really want to go on there because the battery's a little bit small, but... It'll go. <clears throat> oh yeah, it's a bit better. Just do that finger tight. And now I've filled the hands. So far, so good. I mean, I expect no less because it doesn't look like we've had any issues with mice. Very good. Okay, next check is ignition. Well, we've got a light on the dashboard, that's good. That means the electronics are at least alive. <coughs> well, we um, we definitely have power. We've had power for all of one minute. First stage, everything comes on. It's a good start. Second stage, we've got fuel pump and thirty liters of fuel. Well, that was a fail, wasn't it? It's about 50 quid's worth these days. Um, okay, well, at least it's not going to drag the crap out of the bottom of the tank when we try and start it. But that will need getting rid of, I fear. Okay, let's go and have a look, see if uh, everything looks okay. See if we can turn the engine over by hand before we try and turn this any further, risk doing any damage. There, off she goes again. inspection around under the bonnet of the car. What have we found? Well, first of all, we checked the oil level. Uh, it's right on the bottom, which is unusual. Not quite sure what that's all about to start with. Um, check the oil cap to make sure there was no obvious sort of mayonnaise and damp in there. All looks good. Check the fluid reservoir. Again, cap was a little tight, but otherwise everything seems okay. Need to probably put a little bit more coolant in that before we run it. Um, good old poke around. Um, the aircon lines down here look a little corroded, um, as do the lines on the power steering sort of tucked under here. Uh, but nothing that's an immediate issue, something that we'll need rectifying. Um, and as with all these 850s, you can probably just about make out the oil cooler lines there. They're looking a little bit ropey. Uh, they all get a bit rusty. Uh, quite often you see them with a Jubilee clip around them or a zip tie um, just to stop them popping off because it's like a little sort of spring clip onto there. Um, I don't like the look of that, but it'd be fine for now, but that'll be on the fairly urgent list of things to get sorted because what happens is you don't notice that pops off while you're driving along until you get a low oil pressure light as it's already drained half of the engine because um, it's pumping it onto the road rather than through the oil cooler. Ask me how I know. So all in all, it looks pretty good, but uh, I'm curious as to why the oil level is low, because it was serviced about three or 400 miles before it got parked away. So the next thing to do is have a look underneath. So uh, you'll have to excuse the rain noise in the background. I've had to open the garage door to get to this position. Now this is why we check things before we turn it over. It would appear that when we start to move it, we've disturbed something and we appear to have an oil leak. Now, it's not immediately obvious on the camera because I'm basically leaning it on the floor, but it looks like it's coming from the uh, oil drain plug. So I suspect it's literally just a loose plug, uh, possibly the uh, the little O-ring that goes around it, little copper washer has perished. Um, so we need to get it sort of up in the air, 
um, and have a look at that. It might be worth, if we're going to do that, drop the oil anyway, put a fresh filter on because, well, it just, it can't harm. It's been sort of three years. So um, that's going to force my hand slightly. So we're definitely not going to try and start it today, just in case it starts to pour oil all over the floor. Well, more than it already has. Um, so I'm going to call it quits at that because it turns out my wife does not have a house key and is on her way home. So I need to pack up dead quick and get there before she does. Eek. I uh, just swung the garage door open to, uh, to do that bit of recording and hadn't realised just how painfully close that was. That is literally millimetre perfect. Whoops. You can see how tidy this car was. In fact, it's not long since it had been balloted and they'd put nice little stripes in the carpet. I do love the interior. So you've got leather down the centre of the seats and then you've got this nice Alcantara that wraps around everything and is on the door cards. What a cool thing. What I've been trying to do is get into the boot so I could show you some of the cool things on this car. Um, but <laughs> I can't get into the boot. I'm going to try the central locking. Um, but from here, you can see some cool stuff. It's got the optional dog guard on here, which has got little rams that hold it up against the ceiling when you're not using it. And it's got a functioning load cover, which is, I believe, a miracle for a car like this. And uh, the cool little yellow stitch 850 mats. How funky is that? It's such a cool car. So I think the central locking solenoid went. Go on. <sighs> Oh, God, that's heavy. Yeah, I don't think the boot struts work anymore. Oh. Oh, no, it stays up. Mm, no, it doesn't. Good to know, so it doesn't kill me. Right, that is now resting on my head. Bye-bye, um, load cover. Just about goes in. Oh, hello, boot. Ow. That'll be the boot on my back. So we have a spare wheel, a car cover, which isn't going to go back on anytime soon. Ooh, and a toolkit. That's handy. Um, the cool thing about this that I want to show you, I can't because the boot won't stay up, is um, the cool seven seats. So underneath the boot floor here, there is, um, I don't know if I can get it just up enough. Ow, stupid boot. Okay, I'm going to put the camera down, um, take some of this stuff out. Uh, and then try and show you what I mean, because I'm fed up with the car assaulting me. Ta-da! I only have minor concussion from the boot lid. Um, but there we go. Seven seats in the boot. I mean, it's not a very spacious seven seats. So you're going to realistically get a child in here. Um, but yeah, it's quite cool. We have a little uh, clip that comes out and hooks over the rear seats to hold that up. Which, um, if you don't put on... It will try and take your fingers off. Ask me how I know. Uh, and also my clips for this are not working very well. The dog guard should be up and out of the way rather than a, you know, metal headrest. Um, but yeah, that's cool. That's just folds back, hides over the spare wheel well. Uh, unfortunately, you have to have a low profile spare um, because the full size spare doesn't actually fit. So you've got this little low profile now slightly well, not slightly, very mouldy looking spare, so that'll need cleaning. Um, but yeah, that just sits over this, so that comes all the way back. It goes down like that. And if we release the little clip up here, it's starting to sound like um, David Attenborough. Uh, that all goes down and you get one flat boot floor. Although I don't think Seatbelts are quite supposed to go out there. Oh, it looks like that's where they're going. So, oh, bloody boot lid. Right, well, with that um, rather painful adventure uh, out of the way, I'm going to put everything back in here and uh, go see the chiropractor. Fun. OK, well, thank you for watching this episode of Automotive Tales. If you enjoy the T5R content, then do please like, share and subscribe, wherever those buttons are on the screen. 
um, you know the deal. Uh, and the more of you that like, share and subscribe, the more opportunity I have to be here. I can justify it to Mrs. Automotive Tales. So get on clicking the little bell button and uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye for now.